For quite a while now, I've wanted a small display shelf for my modest collection of autographs. After months of trudging through website after website in search of something prefabricated or even something easily modifiable for my purpose, I came up empty. So I ended up where I usually end up, with the realization that if I want it done, I gotta do it myself. <laughs> be told, there are a good variety of prefab shelf options out there for card collectors. The biggest problem with them from my perspective is that most of them are black, and black wouldn't look good in the room in my house where I'd like to put this. I needed something natural wood, and a light wood at that. My desired location was also limited in width to about 20 inches, so long and thin instead of short and wide, like most of what's out there. I found one possible option from Tyler Morris Woodworking. It was a beautiful cabinet and would have suited my needs, but it was $400. After tax and shipping and mounting hardware, it'd be about half a grand, well outside my desired budget. So I decided to build one myself. Since many of you might be in the same predicament, here's what I did, how I did it, and how much it cost. First of all, here's the spot a piece of wall between the entrance to our office and guest room and the closet. Max width would be about 20 inches, but height is sizable. I didn't quite have enough scrap wood on hand, so off to the home store for some wood. I was looking at a pair of 1x8 boards of yellow pine, 4 foot each. I don't have a good way to transport an 8 foot board, so I was happy to pay a little extra for the 4 footers. But they ended up having some pine panels there on sale so I picked through the stack to find a straight one and selected this half-inch panel here, which measured 15 and a half by 40. I also picked up two 1 by 3 strips of poplar. Total cost, about $18, all in. I sketched out this rough plan and mocked up what the shelves would look like at different heights by just clamping them on. I wanted one shelf that was shorter for horizontal cards, and though I don't have any graded cards, I wanted one shelf to be at least five and a half inches to accommodate the possibility of a graded slab or two in the future. I had 18 cards I wanted to display, but wanted room for expansion too, so came up with a simple design for six shelves, which would accommodate up to 30 cards. With decisions made, it was time to get to work. I made all my cuts with a shopsmith that doubles as a table saw too. A traditional table saw would work, as would a circular saw if you're careful about straight cuts. A chop saw could work if it telescoped to accommodate the wider board lengths. I inherited this shopsmith after the death of my grandfather, so I'm always happy to bring it out and put it to good use. First, I cut a 1 8 dado into the poplar strips, 5 8 in from the edge, then cut them to length. In this case, 15 and a half inches to match the width of the panel. Using a fence ensured that each piece was identical in length. Next, I cut the panel to length, 32 inches. I roughed out the placement of the shelves, measuring and marking each, ensuring that it is indeed what I wanted. It looked good. The top shelf is the short one, only three inches for the horizontal cards. Then there are four shelves with a height of five inches, and the bottom shelf is five and a half inches, high enough to accommodate standard slab sizes, just in case. I thought about running dados in the panel and recessing the shelves into it, but decided it really wasn't needed. A simple butt joint would be more than sufficient. I could have just used glue to attach the shelves, as cards don't really weigh anything. Glue would have been plenty strong enough. But I ultimately decided that in addition to the glue, I would also use small screws from the back to reinforce. Number six screws, one and a quarter inches long. Little guys, but always pre-drill nonetheless. So I marked, measured, glued, clamped, drilled, and screwed each shelf onto the panel. Then sanded everything with 120, 
180 and 220 grit sandpapers, and knocked down all the sharp corners. To finish, I added three coats of Helmsman Spar Varnish because that's what I had laying around. Spar Varnish is designed for outdoor use, especially in wet and high sun applications. Tongue oil or simple polyurethane would have worked just fine, but I had the spar varnish, so I went with it. Now, it just needed a day to cure. To hang, I went with a sawtooth picture hanger rated at 25 pounds. With cards on it, this only weighs about 5 pounds, so it's plenty strong enough. After curing, the grain really popped, and the natural yellow pine colors looked good with the wall color and other furniture in the room. And up on the wall it goes. I really liked how it turned out, especially for under $20 in supplies. Leaving it natural wood gives me the option to paint it in the future, and I like optionality. Now for the fun part, how to arrange the autographs. With the extra space, I decided to throw up the 2008 World Series ticket stubs which I attended. After two cups of coffee and a bunch of rearranges, I ended up here. One ticket stub in the bottom, and the rest of the autos spread out. And I will no doubt change these over and over and over, and that's part of the fun. So, there it is. A DIY baseball card shelf, custom made for less than 20 bucks. To celebrate, I picked up an autograph. And not just any autograph, but a 1958 Topps on-card autograph of Richie Ashburn. Ashburn passed away more than 25 years ago, so his autographs are getting harder to find and more expensive. But now I gotta rearrange things. And that's why baseball cards are fun. So I poured a Lagavulin and rearranged the whole thing for Mr. Ashburn, coming up with this. Some of the big autographs are there that you would expect. Mike Schmidt, Robin Roberts, Jim Bunning, Johnny Callison, Big Philly from the 1960s. And then some of my favorites from when I was a kid, like Vaughn Hayes and Darren Dalton. Some of the other autographs I found in random dollar bins, like Ricky Jordan here, and Mickey Morandini, and Dave Hollins, who was the third baseman on the 93 pennant winners. Of course, from the 2008 World Series, I've got Chooch here, and Ryan Howard, and current Phillies Aaron Nola, and Bryson Stott, and dearly departed Philly, Reese Hoskins. Some autographs for the future I'm looking to acquire from the 93 team, certainly John Cruck and Lenny Dykstra. From 2008, Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins, and probably Cole Hamels too. Eventually, I think, I'll get a Bryce Harper up there, but Bryce Harper autographs are really expensive, so it's probably cheaper for me to fly to Florida, get a ticket to a spring training game, and get him to sign one of the cards in person. Now that I've got the shelf, I look forward to years of filling it up. Thanks for watching. Feel free to copy this shelf. The design is all yours. And tune in next time for more baseball card stories, legends, and lore.